What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, or so they say. And I think we say that to give ourselves a sense of reassurance that we can live it up without the fear that the choices we are going to make are gonna come back to bite us in the butt. That somehow in Las Vegas, all our actions don't have consequences. That we're protected here from how real life works. But we know better, or at least we should, because everything that we've ever experienced in life thus far tells us that every action we take, there's always a consequence. And deep down inside, we know that someday we will be held accountable for everything we've ever done. Not by our spouse or partner, not by a police officer, but by our creator, the judge. The indisputable truth is that someday you are going to die. And a bunch of people probably wearing black suits and black dresses will say their last farewells to your corpse in a casket. But as important as funerals are, you have somewhere more important to be. You're gonna be standing before the only true God, maker of the heavens and the earth, the judge who judges impartially and fairly every time. And if he were to ask you, why should I let you into heaven? What would your answer be? That answer is the difference between eternal life and eternal punishment. And before you think to yourself, are you talking about hell? I, I don't care, so what? Let me go there. That's where the real party is at anyway. Just stop. If you do end up there, I promise you that you're gonna remember this moment when you were taking it so lightly and vehemently hate yourself for it. Nobody who is in hell wants to be there. That said, you probably do deserve to be there. And that's not a judgmental thing for me to say. I deserve hell too. You see, what happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas. Those bad things that we do, the sex and objectifying women and men, the drugs, the drunkenness, the lies that we tell, the list that goes on and on of our selfishness and wrongdoing, not just in Vegas, but also in our nine to five life, it adds up quick. And it is evidence that we are guilty. So what are you gonna tell the judge? I, I tried to be good, well, you failed, so. Or how about the classic, well, my, my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds. Let me give you a word of advice. Don't use any line of logic in the ultimate heavenly court that wouldn't work down here on our earthly courts. For example, let's say I was a serial killer and I killed five women at separate times and buried them beneath the floorboards of my house. I think I saw this in a movie once. And I'm never caught, but years pass and I feel really bad about what I did. So I try to do good deeds. One day, I see an apartment complex that's on fire and the, the fire department isn't around to save anyone. So I heroically rush into the burning building and single-handedly save 20 people that otherwise would have died in that fire. I'm heralded as a hero and the local news station wants to interview me at my house. And as they are there broadcasting live for the interview, they smell something terrible. And that smell leads them to discover the rotting bodies that I hid underneath the floorboards. Now, instead of being paraded as a hero, I'm arrested and led up to the judge to plead either guilty or innocent. The judge asks, are you guilty of murdering these five women? I say, judge, I'm gonna be honest with you. Yes, I did do that. But just yesterday, I saved 20 people from that fire. I saved four times the amount of people that I killed. My good deeds far outweigh my bad deeds. What do you think that judge is gonna say? Oh, you're right, give him a medal. Again, we know better. This is even more true with God the judge who doesn't just see what we've done, but also knows the thoughts that we think and the intentions of our heart. So what are you going to say on that fateful day that is coming sooner or later. There's only one answer that will do, and I wanna share it with you. The only acceptable answer is, God, I know that I'm a sinner, and I am guilty, and I do deserve hell. But you said in John 3:16 and all over the Bible that you love me and you don't want me to perish but have eternal life and that you sent your one and only son Jesus to die in my place that if I believe in him and pledge my allegiance to him that I'm not going to perish
but I will have eternal life. Basically, if forgiveness does exist for me, it only exists through your son, Jesus. And while I was alive, I believed in him and I lived for him. That's why you should let me into heaven with you. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like more information about how to get right with God or how to start a relationship with Jesus, please click on the links in the description below. God bless.